going? Like, how you going? How you going? How, how, you, going? Going? how, how, you, how you going? How you keeping? How you keeping? You're Your flower in 2022! What are you using, Megan? Livestock, livestock trailers. Livestock trailers. Okay. What's, where, what's, how far up where are you? In the innovation stand. Oh, you're in there, right? I'm sure we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, call to us. Tomorrow. I'll yeah. tell you a few yarns. There's <laughs> plenty of yarns. I've got some big story for you. <laughs> I told you a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> and I'm going to tell that one again. Yeah. Any, that story. Anyone that tells us they've got a big story, it kind of... I would need to be... Oh, uh, yeah, like, yeah, I need you to be like, this is a showstopper. It's a showstopper. I, I need you to be on flying form, like. <laughs> <laughs> you be held to that, like. Yeah, 100%. This is, this is a live on camera. Yeah. Well, well, you have to have some jemison for breakfast then. Good luck. Um, I have to roll along because we're behind schedule, believe it or not, we had a plan. Um, but uh, it is going to work. What's happening, John? <laughs> people are getting very excited that we're here. <laughs> Couple of people out. We're lit. Someone's already speechifying and we're lit. Only out of the Jeep and four or five people coming across saying, here, come over and see me. That's the camera, lad. Did you see the big camera? And it's like, oh, no, they did. They've taken their business one step further and integrated artificial intelligence and computer vision into a really exciting new product. Be the overall winner of the innovation arena. It's very important to us, and it's a great accolade for us when we go to meet our international partners. Agri-technology is going to be a huge driver of how our agricultural sector and farm business goes forward, and I think there's a very bright future for Ireland in this sector. I'd like to ask you to give a warm round of applause for our overall. We're looking at the, the Agritech innovation right throughout Ireland and the goal is to get this message out to the 102 international guests we have from 19 countries. Okay. We do a lot of stuff really, really well here in Ireland. Like we grow a lot of grass. Yes, absolutely. We make a lot of cows. And uh, we have a lot of nice technology there that can be used in every continent. I've been to awards before where, you know, it's sort of lip service to whoever applied and whoever won. Like oh, how, no. how thorough is your, oh, your, your digging you in now, and, and, and it, really it, figure out, are these guys it's, worthy? It's, it's, it's too thorough. It takes up too much of my life because uh, <laughs> it's an absolute uh, process where we, we mark, everyone gets a half an hour interview. And then we mark them out of individual scores on innovation, uh, new technology, uh, how close they are to market, the adaptability, farm use. Mm -hmm. Even by getting into this arena, you've been shortlisted that your innovation yeah. is good enough to be here. Yeah. So we've uh, unfortunately we can't build a bigger tent in. Uh, uh, I, I in understand. Atlanta. You can't you give can't everybody all the air time because they'll be here all day. Yeah, yeah all I, day. Got it, I got it. I got it. It opens up the conversation, you know, either with the distributors and buy importers here in Ireland and with the farmer. Mm -hmm. So there's no better place to get feedback on if you've a tether or a rake. And a yes. farmer comes up and looks at it and he said, that'll not work here, and why? And you won't get that feedback from any research lab yes. across the yes. world. Congratulations on your awards, Lee. Thank you very much. What did we win and why did we win? Okay, so what we have created is basically body condition score, real-time body condition score on farm. So as cows exit a parlour, if they're going through a race, we're taking images of the cows and then providing the farmer with a real-time body condition score of each individual animal. So it's taking away the work for the farmer to actually verify what the body condition score is. Now the machines do not work for you? Exactly. Generally it's done four times a year by farmers. Yes. Most of them do it when they're inseminating the cows. What we're doing is twice a day every day. So basically we can set six key targets or seven key targets for that animal. Yes. We can set then what we want that animal to be at as a farmer individually can set the body condition score. You can set your high targets and your low targets. If she goes into the high range, you get an alert. If she goes into the low range, you get an alert so that you're picking up on actually illnesses much sooner. So if an animal is starting to lose condition, you can actually deal with that much sooner. So overall, milk production increase, less calving issues, win-win. It's amazing. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Pleasure talking to you. My name is Jim Ryan. I'm a dairy farmer from Cashel County Tipperary. I invented this little fella just for our game, the dairy game. So the idea of it is it sits, it sits on your hip. And if a cow needs a help, 
you're sitting like this, let's say there's no pull, the lower back is out of it. Oh, you're just yeah. leaning your whole You're way basically in. just leaning back. Yes, so, so I need one of these. I also, we'd be pulling the cows in sheds, you know, we wouldn't have them restrained. Yes. So if by chance the cow takes off, you open that and it instantly releases. Oh, you can't pull without having your hand to keep that from Yeah, well, no, the pull, the pull, let's say, kind of, yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. sits, but the minute you bring him to here, you're out. So yes. that's the, the, the safety element. What's the advantage over your traditional cabinet? Well, like the way the dairy farming is gone, a lot, a lot of the cows now, they don't need a jack, you know, it is merely more a help yeah. and assistance, you know, to kind of, we'd be slow at home to put on the jack. If we didn't need to put on the jack, yeah, yeah. Yes. we'd try and pull them, yes. you know, so. It was necessity now, I'll be honest with you. And how much does this cost a farmer? Delivery, 150 euro. Okay. Lifespan, how long did it get? That's, that's the thing about it. I made it out of stainless steel, so it should never rust. And that's the hardest plastic we could get. And the inside of it is the same material that's used in safety belts. So they're telling me it'll never break. You know, if a man breaks it now. He's been towing the tiger with it. It's calving elephants. It's calving elephants. You know what I mean? We gave one to John Hayes, the rugby pair. Yes. So he hasn't broke his one yet, and he's. He's a fair, he's, he's, a, he's a fair cut of a man now, so <laughs> no, you won't break it, you know what I mean? Hey guys, it's Abby from Farm Flicks here and Black Friday is coming up and this is going to be your last opportunity to shop both yearly and monthly subscriptions at the old prices. Get locked in while you can. Therese, we're at the innovation uh, tent here. What is MTech or who are MTech? So MTech Engineering is a family run business. It's myself, my brother Adrian and my father are involved in it. Um, at MTech we engineer and manufacture a wide range of trailers. We start from a small single axle trailer up into a twin axle trailer. We showcase two tipping trailers and we have also brought our brand new, most innovative uh, livestock trailer, which is a 12 by six. That's what I was about to say, why are we in this tent for, for trailers? So we're in here because our product, we've thought of everything. Uh, there's been no shortcuts taken whatsoever. I was telling another boy, uh, yes, the, has a heap of cattle, I says to him, I was winding up, I says to him, you go about, ah, well, with our cat, you know, you get maybe three or four of our big ones in there, but with his type of cat, you probably get seven or eight in there. <laughs> Oh, he was laughing. <laughs> no, he was laughing. Ah, the I think they're kind of understanding now that if they want the serious answers, they go to trays or anything, but if they want a few lies told, they'll come to see me. So we use Cannot Even Ride um, on all our axles. Um, it's a parabolic suspension, so it means there's going to be a lot less la rattle and a lot of smoother ride for when the cattle are in it as well, rather than a kind of wonking about. What's the maximum weight? Uh, three and a half tonne, and it weighs 1.25 tonne. Okay, so I'm very, very critical on my weights. There are my numbers, <laughs> women. I just want to know, would this trailer take four 12 underweight bullocks? It would, it, would, it, it would take them, but you'd be overweight. Okay. You could, but if you were stopped or if you had an accident or something, you'd be in bother. But, but they would fit in. You would fit them in. Okay. okay. You would fit them in, no bother. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks very much for that. Yeah. For that. Right. It looks a nice light trail of the pull. Well, oh, it, it, it's easy to pull, but it's 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 one of the strongest on the market. I see up here these these sides. They are oh. three mil uh, thick oh, and, and folded. Right. So you can put the biggest bullock up again that there. Yeah, yeah, She'll not yeah. go through. Yeah. 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 You could, you could, you could break at from 60 mile an hour to zero. You'll not put them through the front of that there. Some of them other trailers are light. You could break. You'd end up putting a, a whaling into the passenger seat that's for the car. Job, that. Yeah, that's solid bar. Would it be fair to ask what kind of money is it? They're eight thousand euro plus the back. So reasonably well, priced too. Very well made. And with the price you have there, the price you have there, that is everything you see is for that price. Some of the other manufacturers. No, they're for the show. Oh, they're right. mood lighting for the show to set the tone. But we are going to put lights in the trailer. Yeah, good idea. We yeah. are. So when you're loading at night time, yeah. when you're loading at night time, you can, the cattle will come into the trailer. Very good idea. Yeah. Very good idea. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so, very much for telling me about oh, it's all good. I appreciate all that. All good. And no, a great show. You too. Thank you. Yeah, Cheers. Right. Good. Right. <laughs> yeah. Never mind the legalities. If no. they're going, no, 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 if they're going, they're going. This category is for a company that's... Uh, under under five, 
their four founders together started this as a third year project looking at microscopic technology. Fecal egg counts. Has anyone guessed it yet? Michael Agritech, very good. We have developed a technology um, that basically can do a faecal egg count in a matter of minutes. Um, so a what count? A faecal egg count. So we're basically taking, I'll, I'll explain, yeah. It's basically <laughs> a, a dung sample from either a cow or a sheep or a okay. horse. Um, we are able to basically prepare that sample uh, through a matter of steps, run a slide through this machine, uh -huh. um, and it's able to do a full count of all the eggs and species of worms or parasites within that sample. Rather than just blanket, Dosing everything. Exactly. exactly. You sample and you only do dose what needs it. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. But like, you mightn't even need it at all. Yes. That's the thing. You know, I didn't have to go and actually go and buy 150 euro worth of dose and I actually went and bought a row of sheep wire and fix up a bit of fencing. So your money's actually going in the right areas and you're, you're having better quality stock at the same time. You know, one of the biggest things we're probably seeing on farm is like the resistance within herds all across the country. You literally all those boxes is for just pushing a sample through. Yeah, like that's nothing it. So there's just a microscope down through the center. Now, okay. And then you have your one button, few lights, and then that just runs a little motor through, pulls the slide through, and we just record the full slide, and then machine learning does all the rest then. So the idea of this is so that it can be used on farm, so the vet can actually bring the kit with them on farm and do a test there on site. Um, Obviously, I can see I can see why you're approaching the vet with it first because obviously he can sample several farms with one bit of kit. Um, exactly. Proof of concept and so on. Yeah, that's it. Well, congratulations, Selma. Yeah. Thanks very much, Thanks. Thank you. So, your man explained to me the demo. If you're at the mark, if you're at the mark and you're all upside, you need to do that. That's what you need to do. But if you have a heavy lad on a plastic mud yard, you'll not be able to do it, you know? Yeah. You go through it. Yeah. That's the whole idea. And then plus two, if you have a couple of wild ones and you're trying to get them out, you can stand up and you see it. You know, you know, you know. No, you can't do that in the one. Hip, hip, hip. Up oh, there. Yes. I was having a full blown conversation in there yesterday, and there was three or four lads got to the side of them. Just start shaking. Yeah. Ah! Oh. <laughs> so. Oh. Huh? It's a very sturdy one, yeah. They watch from the Starman, Harold. Fairness. There was a lad telling me, mentioning no names because I don't, con I don't, don't, uh, I don't advise speed or anything, but he had that 100 mile hour, that down by him, didn't move. Empty. Empty, yeah. Ah, he's starting on top. Yeah, it'll be 126 kilometers. Not a chance. You're around that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not That's a chance. He, no? had he had lead in the floor. No, he no actually says he must have had a pair of wings. <laughs> <laughs> he must have been drinking Red Bull. He could be. But if you that if you that tank full of water to make her very steady, if there was a star, man, keep the weight down the back of where you think. I'd be sure. If there's a star, you want to be at home, you know. But you'd be an idiot to be out with. Captain, don't wait for no storm. Come on, come on. Drop that down to the shirt for me, will you? Are you a member? Yeah, yeah I am. Good man. Check actually, because I have a funny notion my, my, my thing has lapsed because my visa card is on the table. Oh! Yo. Can, I get, can I get a good deal here now, <laughs> right? Oh, listen. There's anybody running a red coat on there, getting yes, out three passes. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing all right, he's got rid of some of mine by uh, so far. Sorry. <laughs> John's dad's down with us and that's, All right. it, that's his job, get rid of the passes. He's, he's been freeloading with us the whole time. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those as well, I'm one of those as well. Oh yeah, yes. What is the story, Robert? What have, we, what have we won here? What we have here is the new generation we're looking at. Basically, we're trying to be more sustainable into the future. Okay, for doing? maize. For maize, all for maize, yeah. So this has been in development a couple of years. It was originally envisioned for the Canadian market because the Canadian market, the fields are mile by mile. So we wanted a narrower film less wind issues going forward. Plus in Canada, they have very hard frost and they have no spring. It goes from winter to summer almost straight away. We're using a double disc seeder, which means we can plant into a more firmer seed bed, rather than having this yes. big four inches of tilt we're used to normally. Uh -huh. So again, by us being able to go and work in a shallower tillage, maybe no plowing, high speed disc, or maybe a grubber type cultivation, narrower film, so we're using 33% less film straight away. What is the story of plastic in Ireland? My perception was that it was sort of 
bombs with the ban, I suppose, as some people know it, is that there was a single-use plastics directive introduced by Europe. This was decided in 2019. In that, there was a, an annex added that oxo-degradable plastics were also banned. Uh, five weeks before the implementation of the ban, the European Union said, yes, oxo-bio and oxo are in the same group, therefore it's banned in five weeks' time. Okay. So we had an awful short period to try and decide how this is going to happen. So the film we're using now and into the future will be 100% compostable film because we were already doing that for the organic sector. So it was an easy crossover for us, but it's taken industry by shock almost. In all the asking questions we did for three years, we never got an answer until five weeks before the regulation. And you can blame COVID and blame what you want, but unfortunately agriculture <laughs> is seasonal. It can't all change in five weeks. I'm going to visit you on your stand yep. in our day because I want to see your your bale hander, yeah, the bale trailer, yeah. So obviously, Samco is known for these. Yeah, I suppose the benefit of having the new building, we moved into 27,000 square feet building two years ago. There's 55 people working there, so we're looking for a variety of other equipment to make. And I met up with Tom, and he had the concept, and uh, I suppose we had the love to try and, I suppose, modernize it and get it structurally made for production. So yeah. now it's fully out there, and we're doing a range of equipment, silage forks, subsoilers, <laughs> land levelers, high-speed discs, all these things. John, the past man has arrived here. Yes. Fast man, fast man. <laughs> Appar apparently his subscription is, is, is card run out. His card run out. One of those chestnuts, one, yeah. One his visa ran out. <laughs> yeah, but it's okay. We're going to get, what was? What were you going to see over there? The bale chiller? He's going to give me one. The guy's going to give, gonna give you a bale chiller. I'm going to give you a bale chiller. Have a go around the field. We'll give you your product. We'll give you ours. Fair trade, isn't it? Three months past, bale chiller. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. No such thing as a free lunch, lads. Tell me the story, though. How many years was this in your head before you got Sam? Co on board. I have a picture of the first one that was, say, completed 2013, I think. 2013. So and after you had built it in 2013, took it on the field and lifted your first load of bales, what did you think you did wrong? <laughs> oh, Jesus, I think the very first version of this, it wasn't a bale transport, it was a bale buster. With the old type load arm, if you saw the videos or the pictures of the very first trailer, it was an old type load arm that went in, two prongs went in under and lifted it up. The problem with that is if you get a guy who's making kind of like say what would you call soft marshmallow bales the bale would sit down between the two of them and it would come up and then it would pull the plastic and you had damage to the plastic so with the load arm like this all plastic is on the end we're catching where most of the plastic is once we catch it squeeze it and twist it it's presented the trailer 100 percent every time when you pick that up with half a load on i mean how you stable is your trailer but you can see it's on 710 spring loaded. Every operator, after working it for a day or two on level ground, and then he goes up onto, let's say, hills and that, he'll have his own system. And I see with Carl there, you'll be looking at him loading the bales, even with straw bales in a field, and he's loading them down the hill, and you're thinking, what in the name of Jesus is he doing that for? <laughs> but it's the way they, they flow better into the trailer that okay. way if he does it that way. So you just develop a system of doing it. You'll Once you build a bit of confidence in it. Yeah, you build yeah, your yeah. own system. It's from trial and error. The first time, a lad buys this trailer and goes out into the field, he's going to break bales with it. Then when they get used to them and they have their own system in it, we know that. To, to, to put that on the, the fleet, what's it going to take to buy it? What's it, what's oh, it going to take? 80 grand. 80k? Yeah, 80 yeah. And how many bales could you shift in a short haul? We've done it against the uh, same volume of bales an hour with a, two flat trailers and a telehandler, a Celtic and a telehandler. And in both cases, to bring the same volume of bales, we were one man, one machine less, so we're 52 euros now cheaper straight away draw the same volume of bales. Okay. So it's not really the money you make drawing bales. It's draw the bales for the least cost. The Got least you. amount. Got it you. cost you to physically cost you to draw these bales. Every hour you use you're saving 50, 50 How many euros. does you hold whenever you have a load of 16. 16. Mm. It's, you know, from front to back that's 17 foot long. Yes. So it wouldn't be very hard. Like you're only talking to put an extra eight bales, you're only talking about making eight foot longer. Yeah. So it's not and still at that it's what, twenty four foot long? You see not a long trailer. So there is there is potential but we want to just develop this, we want to get this where it's going and get the market solid and make sure we have everything the way it needs to be and then we'll, we'll uh, entertain the boys looking for it. Nice to meet you Tom. Thanks a million. Thanks, You're going to tell me why you love Farm Flex. Uh, I like having, I like the machinery and seeing no. And there's not enough machinery about your house to, uh, to, keep, you, to keep you going? No. No, you love Farm Flex? Yeah. So this is uh, two generations of Samco we're looking at here. Where's the third generation at? Yeah, he's there behind some. He's doing the work. Yes, yes, that's the way. That is the way. Yeah, that's there he is. That's what he speak. So, so is, 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 is the vintage wine the finest, or how does that work? That, uh, we split it up to the easiest way to manage it. Yes, yes, yes. Well, 
with the best of intentions, and if you're up for it, I'm definitely going to come visit. All right, we are, we are um, ready for it. Yeah. Perfect. No problem. Chat, yeah. chat you yeah. later. I promise we're going as quick as we can here. Um, as we all know, knew back in, in the day three years ago, uh, when we got the dread news of uh, the pandemic, there was a big panic in Ireland. What are we going to do? How are we going to sell our cattle? Where are we going to go with them? So we had this company in the innovation unit the year before looking at uh, visual technology for animal health. They pivoted and they developed uh, a company called Marti in about a month. And they went online to 3,000 marts and are now going a huge success uh, across Ireland, across the UK and Scotland. So congratulations to Kieran if he's here and Marti. Kieran, would you like to make your way up? You can buy and sell in a mart from the comfort of your own home. And um, we've got an app out. Um, you can get to us through the website as well. And you can see like up to like 30 to 40 sales a day. And um, now we see like massive amounts of cattle every day going through the platform and machinery sales as well. And I imagine the, the technology's not been simple for you because Mart's been remote, uh, broadband access, internet access, you know, you oh. sending this stuff up into the cloud, it's gotta be tricky. Yeah, and and Mart's are quite harsh environments for technology. Yes. Like it's uh, the cameras that we have to install like are hardened CCTV cameras that have to be able to take a knock from like a knock from a beast, you know, and, and kick up of, of dust and moisture. And the same thing with like laptops. And we also have, um, we also invented like our own digital gavel. So I don't know if you've seen that before. No, I haven't. As soon as the marts open back up again, we realized that they're going to have to have this kind of dual online hybrid. and offline hybrid. sale, hybrid, yeah. So we actually built this ourselves. So we've 3D printed this case. Yes. And then we put these buttons in and we have the, our own PCB and we install our own software on it. But yeah, let's the auctioneer, they take a bid, they can switch between the online increments and they can close off on here as well and delete a bid too if they need to. There, there certainly is an element of you need to be able to see an animal before you bought it. But what we tend to find is, a, some people are happy enough or they try and spot those things before. Or like for big pedigree sales, they might come and look in advance and then on the day they might be remote, they might be somewhere else and then they can bid on stuff that they've already seen. Or they might also have somebody there. that too, is like, it's like I go ahead and look around the livestock, head out and set in the canteen and then get bid away or whatever. Exactly, exactly that, exactly that. And like interestingly we found at the start of COVID, like everybody was online, obviously. And then as things started to open up, we were kind of bracing for a drop in numbers. And there was a drop in bids, but there wasn't a drop in people watching. In fact, like the number of people watching like grew and there were still people bidding. So there's still like a, this undercurrent of bids that never really went away. And so it's, it's definitely here to stay. Like, Convenience is king. It's, it's exactly that. Convenience is king. This is Brian's first experience with playing. Day one, and we're just trying to read up a couple of interviews we didn't get finished yesterday. And, uh, it's chaos. It's chaos, friends. Well, people walking, tell me it's walking through shots and everything. But moral on steroids is not a. It doesn't even describe it. Like, it doesn't do it justice. It doesn't do it justice. Right. Bit more. Bit more breathing space out here in the daylight. What about you? You want to get in the YouTube chair? He wants to get on the blog here. Go ahead, there. What do you need? The free passes. Oh, you want a free? Oh, you want a free pass? You always want something. Hey. Yes. No problem. Free pass. Ten quid. No, there you go. <laughs> are you a subscriber? Do you watch YouTube, YouTube stuff? Yeah. Yes, we'll get you on that. I'll get you access on the R site. Full 350 videos for a full month. But as soon as you go home, log on, because it only lasts for a month. Brad, you may, yeah. you may turn right there and hand it away more. A lot of boys listen there. You want, you want one too as well, boys? Yeah. Oh dear. There you go. Nice. Cheers, thanks. Free access for a full nice. month. Okay, lads. You want one as well? I didn't forget about you. I didn't forget about you. There you go. Okay, boys. Oh, you're giving away something free. People love you. <laughs> What's the crack horse? Oh, I did a little bit now. Yourself. Hold on, give us a second. Hold on a sec, there, boys. Ah, cameraman, <laughs> <laughs> rookies, I'm I'm right. I'm recording. <laughs> I've got it on. I'm recording. I have the shot. We're just waiting on Kevin here. We'll give it away there. Yeah. Most important question of the day: How many lights are burning on the 6499 dashboard? How many lights? <laughs> yeah, how many blinker or blinking at you? Oh, there's three or four and then there's one for the brakes because there's a problem with the brakes but that yes, doesn't yeah. does that not put you off the masses no <laughs> not at all she's <laughs> a great tractor well where are we at the play and what's the crack i did a little bit now tipping around seeing everything there is to be seen yes what, what are you fancy what are you in the market for oh a few things now looking at a bit of slurry equipment maybe a new calf feeder 
Uh -huh. Maybe bring these yolks home with me now. Yes, yes. Hopefully. Are you getting a good deal on them, are you? Well, I hope so now. <laughs> hope so. What do you think of the tomatoes? Very happy with them now. Yeah, very happy. And they, the biggest thing, we're going around mowing for farmers, and the farmer will come over to me and says, Jess, they're doing a great job mowing. And it makes you go, just was they doing a bad job before or something? <laughs> well, did you use the grippers at all? We did, yeah, we used the grippers. We didn't use them at the start of the year, and then we used them for our own silage. And next thing, we were nearly using them for every job. We've done a, quite a lot of grouping now towards the end. We grouped whole crop, yes, we grouped yes. arable silage, we grouped for baling. After we'd done our own second car, every other job was grouped. Now, we've done a lot of grouping. Well, what horsepower are you running them on here? 200, on the nose, dyna and tested. How did it handle it? To me, perfect. Like you tip away there in a light crop, you do 11, 12 kilometers an hour, no bother. You get into a heavy crop, you're still doing seven kilometers an hour. I could go into a 12 acre field, 40 minutes later, I'm out the gap. And if I have the single John Deere mower on the job to do the back sport, we're out in half an hour. There's one field that we went out, two of us went into it, 25 minutes later, nine acres is on the ground. Well, what about the flotation? What do you think of the, 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 the it, contours? It followed the ground very well now. One of the first jobs we've done was boggy ground. And you know yourself, boggy ground, it's, yeah. it, every year it changes a bit. Uh -huh. And like even, the I mowed it and one well, of our drivers bailed it. And after we finished up that day, come back to me and says, just, they've done a right good job there. So normally we'd mow with that with John Deere, a uh, trail mower, and it is a great joke for skinning a brow and missing a dip. But they, no, they didn't do that at all. Well, how's the season been for you? What's this, what's this year like, weather-wise, farming-wise? Oh, how, how everything has gone well. The our machinery has gone fairly well. We did have an issue with that, the wire rubbed in the gearbox. The combine broke down last week. Uh -huh. It finished up for the season. Crops have done very well. Bulls have done very well. All in all, it's been a very good year now. We can't, can't complain too much now. We had a few downs, but mostly ups. So. Well, how's the YouTube channel going for you? Oh, sure, it's fine. Look, we can't complain at all, sure. Look, I'm absolutely flying. Why did you decide to, 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 to go there in the first place? Why, well, oh, back in college, and a friend of mine, we used to watch a lot of YouTube, and it's kind of for the crack, I started making farming simulator videos. Yes. Like, that's how it all started. That's how it started. That's how it started. Farming simulator you videos. You still play farming simulator? I do. Every, near enough every <laughs> night. You can ask Liv there, she'll vouch for it. Every other night I'm playing farming simulator. You get fed up with the real thing. I'm making videos to be no, playing No, no. There's nothing better than going mowing all day and then going home and mowing all night on the computer, so. <laughs> When do you sleep if you're making videos? Look, it's not too bad. Liv does wherever she's gone there. She does all the editing for she's me. She's the editor. She, she does the hard that's, work. That's the heavy she lifting. The I work. can testify to that. Yeah. That's the hard work. Well, making the videos is handy. Behind every good man is a great <laughs> woman. A great editor? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what's it like whenever Phil hands you an ocean of footage? How, where do you start? It's what? easy. Sometimes it's on like five different memory cards and you have yes. to piece it all together like a jigsaw. But when it's all on one card and it's fine most of the time it makes sense. You're not an Irish woman? No, English. Where yeah. are you from? What region? Uh, Downshire, Staffordshire. Yes. Yeah. So I've been here three years now. How did you fall in? Tinder. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> and did it, was it like a match and then I'm going to have to get a flight here? Yeah, you came to me. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Over That's at amazing. a vintage machinery show. Oh, oh, even better. Yeah. Even better. Match me in heaven. That's not real. <laughs> yes. Not real. For one episode or one, yeah, one so segment that he's putting out, how, how, how much time are you spending on it? Say, all? like a 25 minute video is about two hours. We need to get hooked on. You want a job, dude? <laughs> uh, a 25 minute for us is about two and a half to three weeks. Two weeks? Seriously? Two weeks? Yeah. yeah. Don't mind. Like I did today's video last night for two hours. See, we're, I, I, I'm doing something wrong, boys. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, you're, you're blessed with a good cameraman, you uh, say, yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> ten minute, ten minute, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He did mean it, he meant that, he totally meant that. <laughs> right. Tell me, Farmer Phil got a set of some Asmores. Yes. Was that, were you the brainchild, or how did this happen? Yes, it was all an accident. We were above in Lines and Button last year, and Liv came over to me and she said, we met you over in um, Harper Adams a few years ago. And next thing Phil like said, do you want to do an interview? And I said, jeez, I've not been ready. And um, we started anyway, and we spoke away, and uh, he edited it, and he did an absolute brilliant job. That's how Phil and myself came about. And then my daughter was talking earlier in the summer, and she said, why not pull, bring Phil on? She said, I think to draw a good crowd. 
Shit, jeez, I'm flabbergasted here today with the way the whole thing has gone. And I've taken more photographs of families together and everything here today, and all the gangs, young ones. But uh, Give me the technicals of this more. Like, what, what beds are in it, for example? Yeah, Samas make the beds. Make their own bed? Make their own bed. Everything in that mall is Samas. They have patented that gear box there that's on it. Uh-huh. Right, that's um, everything that you might see on other machines is belonging to Samaz because they designed where are they based or where are they operating Samaz operate in Poland they started off in the 80s and around 83 84 making drum malls and they've developed into a, a big company since they've a big huge new factory built now in the last few years but I was for a good few years going off to the show in Germany and I used to look at these malls and I used to be kicking them and, and Jesus Christ, they, 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 they can't be that good. I'd walk down the hall and I'd come back up and I'd have to have another look at them and I got talking to the buyers and I said to them, who's the importer in Ireland? Well, we have a small importer but he don't want to do the big stuff for us. We spent two or three years talking about it anyway and eventually I sent over a blast of money and I got back a front and a rear more and a rake and geez, the rake stood up to the drivers <laughs> because we wouldn't be easy on stuff and even the first set of malls the front and the back one we put the hardest driver in the island on it and when he didn't break it it won't be broke yes okay I'll, uh, one of them boys <laughs> since then we've over 70 sets of butterflies walking between ones with groupers and without at the moment uh, we, have, we have a category here, smart farming. Uh, if you can't work harder, we have to work smarter. And I think that was a, some of the vibe that came through last night on uh, the various talks we had as well. Um, and um, it's, it's, uh, this is a really interesting award for us because in terms of a development, a cluster, and a network of companies that actually work together to deliver solutions, I don't think there is, what we've heard from Frank O'Mara's talk last night was, there's no silver bullet for all this stuff that we have to, to, to solve. So what we're looking at here is a really nice collaboration. And uh, the winners of this smart farming category is Alco and SensorTech. Daglan, you're at the Innovation Awards. Uh, what did we win and what was it for? Uh, we won Smart Farming where we linked our Alco drafting gate with the uh, Need App SensorTech collars. Uh -huh. And the, app, the collars are linked to the gate through an app. So okay. once the collars say the cows are in heat, they will automatically sent to our gate for drafting, so the farmer doesn't have to input any numbers. Is this, is this a new thing, the, the, the combination of the two? Or? The combination of two separate independent Irish companies sitting down and talking together okay. and making both technologies work and talk together. Well, how, how, how tricky is that? How do you approach a business and go here? We, we have this thing, it might work quite well with your thing. Yeah, you can be very cautious if you have your product and they have someone else and there's a bit of competition there. But um, I suppose they're need up as market and global leaders in heat detection and we have a a market leading gate here in Ireland. Uh -huh. um, so we felt it was a good combination to bring the two together and join forces and make the product bigger. Well, is this, is this specialist to the dairy industry or is it just your average farmer needs this? No, this is really for the dairy farmer. Okay. It's a saving labor for the dairy farmer. So what kind of investment are we looking at in terms of the gate to go with the collars? So the gate is, is working at about 13,400 euro okay. and the collars work out about 120 a collar. So if you were trying to sell that to me, how, how would you present that? How do I save 13,000 by, by oh, well, you're, you're drafting the cattle? You're saving a complete labour unit, at least, for the whole year. So all the cows will automatically be drafted. The gate also has a mobile phone app. So again, if you're out the yard or you're in the shed and you see a cow sick, you can just type it in there and okay. then a draft it. So there's no communication to the man in the pit. You don't have to rely on somebody else to do tail paint, on somebody else to stand on the deck, somebody else to manually sort cows out. So it's an awful lot safer. It, no win when I was with cattle or six or anything like that. You just type in your cow number, once she walks through, she'll be drafted. What's your connection to the business? Is this your baby? Is this your project? This is my baby, yes. I've worked on this since uh, 2010. So it's grown and changed every year. Three or four years ago, we didn't even have a mobile app. Okay. It's developed an app, and in the last two years, we developed a link with SensorTech. So it's my baby, and I sleep with it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and continuously try and develop it, and again, we went to Holland uh, two weeks ago to meet with NEDAP directly as with Centratech, they brought us out and we intend bringing more and more features from NEDAP in Targate. Okay. Well, where's the business based or where are you, where are you heal from? So we're based in Trim and County Mead um, and we make all the manufacture, all the steel up in Trim and we weld it, send it off to Galvanize, bring it back. We have a team of three assembling gates every week and then we send them out, test them there, send them out finished and then we fit them around Ireland. Um, so we're looking to get into Northern Ireland, Scottish, UK market with the gates after after winning this award. Well, congratulations on your award. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time.
Donna, we've been hearing about the gates and the award you've won. Uh, explain to me what SensorTech is, why your colours are the business. Are the business. SensorTech Ireland is um, Ireland's largest supplier of heat detection and health monitoring systems. We've been um, in operation now in Ireland for the last six or seven years. Um, we supply need apt to standalone system farms and we're linked with Alfco as regards auto drafting. That's our partner in County Meath. Well, where, did the, where did the heat colours all begin at? We've been involved in the agri industry for the last 15 years um, in the technological side of things. Myself, my brother and uh, Padraig Kelly have been working with NEDAP for the last seven years. We approached them and they approached us and the partnership is working very well. It brought us to number one in Ireland, which is great, and to win the award at the NPA is a um, very proud moment. There's a lot of heat detection systems in the market, but we linked through EID tags, which was the first time that was ever done. So our partner company, the likes of Cormac Tagging, came in and advised us on EID tags and how the drafting would work with the gates. So even if an animal on a farmyard doesn't have a collar, you can still draft them. Okay. That's unique to SensorTech and Alfco. It's very different in how that operation works. The system is actually um, broadband proof. So the day that you don't have broadband or internet working, the heat detection system works, the gate works. Um, but it's all worked through the EID tag on the ear. And as Ursula and Cormac Tagging had brought that knowledge of how that would work. So the, the IFAC uh, AgTech Award goes to the Cotter Crate. We won the Best Newcomer Award here at the Innovation Arena Awards for our Cotter Crate sheep handling system. Now this is something we actually came to the ploughing with three years ago as something we invented on the home farm for solving lamb handling. We were doing, got into doing vaccination with small lambs and as you can imagine, you're inside in a race with little two foot animal, you're bent over all day trying to vaccinate three or 400 of these. Yes. So we came up with a way where instead of having to bend down, the animal is up at your height so you can do all the jobs you need to do in one go. It takes the back eight and the hard work out of it. So we actually won best overall startup three years ago, but now we've won another award with the full sheep handling system that we've since gone on and developed. Your sheep is gonna come up the ramp here. This is Mary the lamb. Mary's gonna walk on and then we're just gonna push in the side and then the floor is gonna drop so her feet are out of contact with the floor and then they can't kick, they can't scream, they're nice and comfortable. Right At that point then we can run in, we can drench Mary if we want, we can vaccinate her. If they had a dirty bum, we can pull this down as well and we can get in there for a clean dag. Right Weight's recorded and everything and then say if we're at weaning time, we want to maybe separate male, female, or we want to pull out the fat lambs ready for slaughter. We have an option of drafting two A's out the front, and we can also send them that way if we want. So we decide what direction we're sending them, and then to let them off, we just pull back the bar. They're gonna fall back down to the ground, and then to reset, we just hit a little pedal. So it's very simple, all mechanical, it's just an in-out motion, but no matter what size the animal, whether it's a five or 10 kilo lamb, or whether you're dealing with a 50 plus or 60 kilo yo, they're all gonna be at your height, so it's taking that work out of it. And like, a lot of the inspiration for this comes from, like my dad is, you're a very typical farmer, he's 50 plus, yes. he's short of patience, he's short of time, and he's a little bit blind. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> he's the per but he's the perfect use case for us, because in terms of trying to develop something, getting that really honest feedback from what the market's going to be out there. Look, we thought it was a great yoke, but being able to get his help, and we've also worked with a number of other Irish farmers to make sure that it has all of the things that a sheep farmer will need so they can do everything they need to. What age are you and your brother? So I'm 21, just going into final year of college now, and then Jack is two years older than me, so he's just finished at it. And like, we're manufacturing it at home. Is this the dream? Is that what we're doing now? You're both manufacturing this and selling it's, it? It seems to be working out. Look, we're still doing the college as a plan B, so we'll see how things go. But certainly we're seeing huge demand for them because sheep sheep work isn't getting any easier and like margins are getting tighter and tighter so yeah, yeah. farmers are having to fight to find those ever tight margins and yeah. something like this makes a huge difference and it makes the work enjoyable there's a lot to be said for having a bit of fun when you are doing the job and when the fun is taken out of it it's just very hard to keep going what's been the highlight so far john of the entire show just i uh, have the up the date now what have you enjoyed the most so being at a show as a business is entirely different to being at a show as a spectator. Whenever you're a spectator, you just teetle around and you go, oh, you see out there, boy, look at it there, okay. And then yes. whenever you're there as a business, you're actually trying to get stuff done. So <laughs> yesterday was a blur of walking from A to B, making the videos that you're watching right now. And so they, uh, meeting and greeting along the way, which is, that's actually the bit for me that I did. It's busy at the minute, though. We're always flat out. We're always flat out. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I stick a mic on you and I get an interview. Hold on a second here. Hello. I'd love you to come and spend the day with me. And then you can tell me if I'm flat out doing, oh, oh, I'm not that bad. Like I do a bit of work. Like I'm not, I'm not like your partner. I don't, I don't sit in the tractor and look at it on the phone and then come home and look at it like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Auto steer, auto steer. Oh, flat out here. Like, oh, this is wild, boy. This is wild. Yeah. <laughs> and what have you got? A uh, case in John Deere. Okay. What do you call it? I tried the new Holland, but didn't work out too well. And so, case is nearly. Lot of oil floating about there. Or? Oh, oil. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And what do you do? Uh, mostly zero raising, slurry, hedge cutting, breaking, mowing, root and teddy. I think you do a job. You need to come round with me yeah, and we'll blog with you. All right. yeah. <laughs> brilliant. That's oh, absolutely brilliant. And why are you here with him? I, uh, Keeping an eye on him. Make sure he doesn't spend any more money. Yes, That's yes, the yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. I must get you out someday. Yes. Uh, email into the. Uh, Info at Farmflex. Yeah. Email in, say you'd bumped into us and you'd met us and whatever else, and yeah. we leave it in the hands of another boy in the office, Connor. Ah, so uh, yeah, well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll only come out if she comes she out. She needs to be driving for the day. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. Driving? No, no, sir, no, there's no working driving. I'll give you a camera. And I'd say to you, run yourself up that field and get that shot, and then go down to the gate, and then get the shot at the gate. <laughs> you know. selfies yes, I, <laughs> Thanks very much for calling over and having the chat. Like, yeah. um, have you got an air freshener? Do you get an air freshener? I know I have one, yeah. yeah so that's okay, good stuff. Yes, yes. Right. Good luck. See you later. They split up. They split up. They split up. They split up. That's it. They're going separate ways. Don't love each other no more. True love. Point in the sun a wee bit, but just look down that avenue. Left her up there, Brian. Look down that avenue. Do you see the volume of people coming up there? They're still coming in. Like, like hot and heavy. Hot and heavy. So. As I say, it's, it gets thick here to walk through and people stop you and it's like, there's a run of joke in the office, it's a white crack and it's like, how famous do you want to be? Yes. And it's between Brian and Connor and whoever and obviously because I'm a YouTuber for a bit, it's mostly me to stop but at the same time, as a business here, most people don't actually know who Farmflex is. So that's why we're here working, we've got to press the flesh as the man says. Yes. I was astounded by the level of, of work that this, this uh, this engineer put into developing a, a, a new machine or a prototype, and you'll see it in the innovation unit. It takes on the, the role of actually raking in silage and tedding silage into one machine. It has been tried before m multiple times, but to see the level of detail and uh, the thought process, uh, I'd say there was countless hours on CAD trying to design this. So I'd like to welcome Michael Clark, Clark Engineering. This is the yoke I'm curious about. What is this, John? This is the. It can rake and. Head both, I think. Heading and raking. Yes. I suppose when I was in college, you know, I was working for a contractor and I'd have used headers and rakes and I thought there was there surely was a way of getting a machine to do the two of them, so I started the design work doing a bit of research and uh -huh. that was four or five years ago and here I am now today so so this is a machine you've been using on your own farm or yeah I detested it a few times now during the summer all right so um, it wouldn't have a huge amount of acres put through it just yet now but how does it head versus how does it rake unique design is in the rotor by using the, that white hydraulic ram over the center of each rotor it'll change from tedding to rake and does that just change the cam or how, it, it'll disengage the cam and then um, the tines all straighten and then they're locked into position then for the tedding. So my old fellow was studying it and he says, how do you stop the two rotors connecting whenever they're both driven by? Oh, oil? well, you see, that was, I went hydraulically this time because it was easy, you know, for changing Perfect the concept. Directors. Yeah, and it was a cheaper solution for so making it. Same mechanical, it'll need to go, like it needs to be timed like a tether is normally. So. And has this completely dried your bank account? Um, <laughs> <laughs> or is it a, an investor going no, to Malone? No, the man works to Malone. Yes, it's it method, is. absolutely method. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's an investment, I suppose, so we'll yeah. look at it like that. One, two, we'll have to sell the seven, eight, ten and buy, buy a big harvest. 
Like you're Finty Drivers. You can like. never sell a 7 to 10, I'd just be wrong. You're Finty Drivers then. Like. I've like, done the drivers, I've no, no work. Huh? You could be the under scooper. I wouldn't like that. That's a scooper, <laughs> man. That's the you. Yes. You know yes. The score, he knows. Man. He knows. Yeah. Well, that was nice we leave it. All right. Yes, boys. Nice talking to you. Oh, we're going well. That's the job. I seen you in Enterprise Ireland. Yes, I was thinking. I'm Brian. Please Brian, meet you. Sorry about yes, no, you're grand. You're grand. I seen you in Enterprise Ireland. They were getting out there. Well, how are we getting on at Malone? That's your grand now. How are you getting on at Malone? <laughs> <laughs> Depends what you're giving us. No. <laughs> I uh, have uh, New Year out this year or this last couple of years? Yeah, well, we have uh, Mount Felicia Moors here, John. Uh, we have a 2.6 and a 3 metre, and we have this uh, This is the start of our um, trailed. Um, trailed tether, tether, yes. Yeah, so, so why did we go trailed? Um, I suppose it's the same size as the mountain one here. I suppose you can put on a lighter tractor, 70, horse, a 70 or 80 horsepower tractor, uh, compared to the mountain one, that's 1400 kilos. So you're not lifting, you're just pulling. So. I suppose there's. Um, What's the horsepower then if you're just pulling? About 80 horsepower, you know. Suit, suit Leslie? Suit Leslie, I seen him yesterday <laughs> as well, actually. About, uh, I was wondering, was the bailer still outside the door? Is he all the bailing done? He has. Oh, aye, so huh? maybe we'd be better straw or something, day, maybe. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a happy man. Is well, I got him well fed yesterday now. Oh, yeah. he, was in a, he was in his element <laughs> yesterday. He's flat at the time of the day because he's well fed yesterday. Yeah, we yeah. did lose him this morning now whenever we were trying to get him into the Jeep. They come down like the vintage stuff down there, is he? I seen it there on the way in. No idea, I haven't seen him since breakfast. He'll appear, don't worry. He normally comes up and pays me a visit, but. Yeah, so look, we're going on to an 8 and a 10 rotor, an 8 and a 10 rotor, um, how are you Brendan, how are things, how are you Declan? We're going on to a, an 8 rotor trail as well, so look at yes. where the marker's going through, you know yourself John, everything is bigger and... Bigger and better. Bigger and better, we tested the front more there as well, the front commissioner more, so... Uh -huh. Hopefully next year we get one test of butterfly so we're Sweet. Sorry, Sweet. Moving along a long way from Finch to the day is uh, yeah. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> a bit warmer so, of the day now. Yeah. <laughs> the short yeah. sleeves. Yeah, it's lovely, yeah. <laughs> but look what I suppose this is where the market is going and we're doing a lot now in export, so we're doing a lot out of Germany, out of New Zealand and that's what they're looking for, so that's what they're looking for, that's what they're going to get. How important is it, like a business like yourself, to be at this show? Look at where would you get the volume of people? It doesn't matter if you advertise in Farmflex or wherever you ever advertise the farmers you're in, whatever it is, you're never going to get the volume of uh, people. Like, they're so talking about 300,000 people over the next three days. So there's no place, like, it's the biggest outdoor show in Europe. Did you get the sun yesterday? Did you get the sun yesterday? Let me see. Let me see. You got the sun. Oh, you got the sun. Look at this, Kevin. They got the sun yesterday. Look at this. Oh, look at that there. Yeah. And me getting burnt. I get burnt down one side of my face. Like in this here. I need, look, look at that. Unreal. 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 Look. Amazing. Amazing. You ain't your holidays. No. At the plan. At the plan in September. And look at the tan you get in September. Unreal. <laughs> good, good luck. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> Anyone watching this video, John, can they just scan this QR code? Technically, you could scan that if you were really, really eager. You could freeze frame and scan and get that URL. Now, that URL, I don't know if it's still alive when you're watching this. If it is, if it is, fill your boots. Good luck. Well, this is uh, Morris Trailers' latest latest innovation uh, featuring at the Innovation Arena. We have uh, a hydraulic sided trailer that uses five ton braking strength lifting straps okay. to contain bales from falling off on the road. So, um, what's, what, what do you mean by five ton braking strength to, to the layman? What is that? Yeah, so basically it'll require 10 tons on each row uh, for those straps to fail. And so, yeah, the realistically, we're never going to achieve that on the road. Um, so they're incredibly strong. They're actually lifting slings, so uh, modified for road use. So fully certified uh, straps as well. And uh, yeah, a unique folding mechanism that we have submitted to the Irish Patent Office as well. So can you for, for ratchet then your straps and, and take your straps off? You take your straps off, they're done on the binders on the back, as you can see. And you can adjust the attention on them kind of to suit out. Some bales are four foot long or four foot wide and some are four foot six so okay. you can kind of alter that slightly to suit your own your own baler as well. Yeah. And your your rams really work the last little bit. They give your last little squeeze just to tighten the in but yeah. just you can you uh, you have the adjustment there. For, you see a few people there. kind of coming up there, kind of putting their hands to the straps and they think it might be slightly a bit too loose, but I don't think they realise that the straps are designed to come in past the bale. Yes. And they really wrap around the bale and wrap it in tight. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So you're getting a hydraulic tension on them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, we're going to move along to our Agri-Tech uh, Agri Technology Award uh, for, um, for this year, for 2022. Um, a formidable uh, husband and wife team um, did a fantastic pitch to us in the Innovation Arena. That's one thing I, I should actually say. It's part of the lessons we've learned with, with COVID. We actually had a hybrid model this year where all the, the applicants actually pitched online on, on Teams and it worked really well for us. So uh, as part of that pitch, uh, this company delivered an excellent uh, brief on their technology uh, and how it's going to make a big difference across this sector and multiple sectors. So I'd like you to give a uh, big congratulations to LV Logics Limited. Our product is called the Silo Spy. The Silo Spy is a silo level monitor. So we focus on taking the levels from silos, transmitting them to the cloud and then letting the farmer or the end user of the silo know how much is in the silo. We monitor silos full of wood pellets, we monitor silos full of cement, flour, molasses, we can monitor anything. We have over 400 products in four, 12 different countries. We share our link, so you can send it to the relief milker. If you're going to Lanzarote, you say, there, there's the silo levels, keep an eye on that. Does it, does it give you like a day countdown? If you're down here, does it go like you've got two days left? We have predictive runout, that's actually one of our next developments. Because it's tricky. John, you're giving them ideas here. <laughs> you're giving them ideas. Whoa, we we get John. I need rallies. Don't, don't give it away. Don't give it away. Uh, uh, there's a dairy farmer yes. in, in Donegal, actually. Yes. This one's in Donegal right now. But this guy. I like the way it's a sawtooth wave. That's, that's every. That's if you cool. look at the time on each of those steps, that's the that's he's milking. Yeah. That's the milking time. So here he had a hangover. Here he was, <laughs> and so on. So, so we can tell a story. We can we can tell the story yeah, around. Yeah. But the farmer himself. They love that because they, it gives them vision where they never had it. Some of, them, some, of, some of them like it because they have relief milkers or the multiple farms or they have whatever, but they have that on their phone. They ha can have a history of the mealman was there and he delivered how much. You know, so there's, there's yes. lots and lots yeah, of traceability. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We hear all about traceability, but that's, that's currently what, what, seeing what happened. Keep the mealman honest, making yeah. sure the band is full. We're delighted to welcome uh, a newcomer onto the block for us. Uh, real exciting technology, um, probably putting the control of uh, where milk ends up back in the farmer's hands. So uh, I'd like to announce Unison as the overall winner of the engineering uh, for the 2022 Innovation Arena. Congratulations. What did we win on the, on the table here? What did we get the award for? Well, for engineering and uh, for designing this product new to the market, it's a smart micro dairy. So farmers can pasteurize milk on the site, fully automatic. Uh, it's worked on an app. So once it's pre-programmed, raw milk comes in one side and they pasteurize milk into the vending machine without. So the idea is to retail straight off farm? Or what yeah, it's retailing on the farm. Okay. So if they want to sell the milk directly to the, from the farm to the public, it's a fully certified pasteurizer, has all the certification required by the Department of Agriculture. Okay. Is there any limitation to how much it can turn out? You know? Because it's a flash pasteurizer, which recovers the energy from the, from the cold milk as well, can do up to 500 litres per hour. It's not going to be a problem then. That's, <laughs> they don't, if, you can, if they can sell that milk, they'll tell us a very good farmer. Yes, yes. <laughs> Is your mate going? Yes. Uh, my highlight of the show so, so far. far. Um, getting sunburned. Getting sunburned, probably. You didn't uh, get as bad as me. I did like looking at the, what was, was it like a county? Do you know that a county? Oh, yeah, the, 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 the TW oh, 1884. That was lethal though. That's a home that, that was that, a TW. Yeah. That's, that was a serious boss. Oh, it's a fake. I didn't get a chance to look because I was working while you were being like, look at me, I'm John from Fairplay. I must go no, have a look at that. Right? That's why she's called the TW 1884 because okay. she's a TW with a front axle conversion. That's why she's a super cute. Okay, yeah. yeah, I was wondering, it's mint though. It is mint. Yeah. Um, well, you, you have to be an enthusiast now to go to that effort. Like, yeah. Fair play. Bit of, bit of thinking work. to get that made. Bit of, bit of content right there. Yeah, so. <laughs> but we're running around so much, it's nearly hard to just float around and have a look at everything, isn't it? Really? There's so much here, like, it's everything. Anything from a candle to a Charlie Bull, like, do you know what I mean? It's mental. It's just crazy what's here. I haven't really got out of the centre section yet. Oh, we we, we've been very much in the machinery. We, we were up the far corner there today. We ended up kind of getting a bit of lost and we ended up in a sheep society and everyone. We didn't really know where we were. We're just, you want some fair flicks. <laughs> Major, hey, yeah. what, what's the story of the show? What's what's new, what's happening? Um, well, it's good and busy, big crowds, weather's good. Everyone's out and about again. Um, we've a good um, selection of our slurry range, dribble bars, trailing shoes. We've our new 10 meter dribble bar there. We've some fold down dribble bars for access into sheds and that. 
we have our cyclone range, we have our topper range, and we have our new hedge cutter head, which can be put on an excavator or mounted on a, a sidearm like this. What's, what's unique about it? What's, what makes it a major header? The blade system on it is very similar to our cyclone blades, which a lot of people will be familiar with for chopping and shredding, heavy scrubland, all yes. that. So we started applying that to hedge groves and that. A lot of contractors that be cutting road verges in particular are doing a lot of a lot of grass work under hedges and electric fence and that would complain that flails are too hard driven, burning out motors on flails and everything. So the rotary is much easier powered. Okay. It'll also cut heavy hedges and it'll take out three, four years of hedge scrove, no problem with that. White thorn hedge, furs, bushes, anything. You've got a roller and on the side boom ones, they can be hydraulically adjusted. So you can pull that back up and cut the hedge in reverse. Um, the front here, the front hood, can fold back hydraulically, the hydraulic ram there folded back, so you can let in heavier material. Okay. It'll cut up to um, four inch diameter timber, and it'll do pretty much anything a hedge cutter will do with a better ground speed. Bulletproof, is it? Lower, lower fuel <laughs> consumption. It's bulletproof, it is. It's a, it's a hydraulic motor with a cam clutch on that okay. to protect it, and there's two gearboxes driving the two rotors, there's a rubber shock absorber between them. Yes. Yeah. And it's what fully galvanized. What price does this compare to a conventional flail head? Flail head? We're quoting about um, nine and a half plus fat there for that. Okay. So there's bits of deals going on here today if you're interested. I'm not in the market just myself now. Out, <laughs> tap the car. You're looking with the dagger or something yeah, yeah. first. <laughs> UCD Ag Tech Startup Award. I'd like to call the winners of the award Concept Dairy. David, uh, you won an innovation award. Which award was it and why? Well, so we won the UCD AgTech Innovation Award for a startup. And the reason why was our product that we've developed for dairy farmers and milk processors. So we've built up an app and a platform that allows dairy farmers lock in their milk price for up to two, three years into the future when they choose. But one of our innovations is that we've also built in a minimum price function for the farmers. So. If you want to lock in your price, but want, don't want to lose out on the upside, for a small fee, you can pay that and you can get that price protection. So if the market crashes, you're still protected, but when it goes up, you still get the upside. So we look at the, all the prices, of all the physical and financial prices, and we put them all together in our artificial intelligence machine learning program and give the farmers a number that they can actually transact on. I used to be a commodity trader in London for the banks, oil and gas and electricity, and then I was headhunted back home to Ireland to run the trading team for Ireland's largest dairy exporter, Ornua. And then I figured there's a better way to do this. Let's set up a company to build it, to give farmers the transparency and give processors the ability to lock in their milk prices as well. So the, in order for the farmer to win, the processor has to win as well. And what we're finding is if you take price out of the conversation between the processor and the farmer, it's a much nicer relationship because the price is always the most fractious point of any relationship. Yes. So. For your average farmer to use your app, he needs to make sure his processor is on board as well. But they can download it for free now and see exactly how much the milk is worth today. It doesn't cost anything. Go to the app store, search for Concept Dairy, you'll find the app, download it and have a look. I see you brought yourself an 1180 to the stand. He did, yeah, 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 yeah. How tricky is it putting it up on top of that? I suppose it took us about a dozen attempts to get it right, so the last time we put it up it got a little bit easier, you know, but yeah. the first time it was a bit tricky, all right. You drive it yourself, no? I did drive it myself, <laughs> there was no one else volunteering, so anyway, yeah, it was me. Not so yeah. bad. Plyon match, what, how important is the plyon to you guys? It is becoming more relevant than it ever was, with um, the way marketing and social media is. To be here is a big presence and it's a big bonus for us, as we feel like. The way we display the, the machine here, it kind of draws attention to it. Attention like that, you just can't uh, generate anywhere else, like, you know what I mean? We have thrown, it's a cue to, to get pictures on it, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's just, how do you put uh, a price on it or how do you replicate it, you know what I mean? So it is really important for us, like, yeah. Does he want, does he want in? Yeah. Come on here. Big interview. Oh, yeah. Big interview. Yeah. Are you subscribed to Farflex? I am. Why I bought the online part yo for the videos. Yes. Great um, job. Why do you like it so much? I like tractor. And I'm into a bit of slightly. Show us the show us the screw. I don't want to screw. Are you joking me? Ah no. Don't buy a crone, hi, I lost my finger on it. Yes. <laughs> Go down and visit that lad's contract now, the Yes. See the aunt Nagri lad. The other boys, big way of going. Go oh, Sammy, so I'll use your Daphne in a big way of going. Sammy, go on. <laughs> what more yes, do you want? Yes. What more do you want? <laughs>
Happy lads? Yeah. You all subscribed? Yeah. Main site or YouTube? Main site, main site. Who, who wants to be on the main site over three months past? Who me, wants it? Me. Sure, you're already on it. No, but I, I lost it there. Oh, you lost, sir. Yeah. Hold on, there you go. There you go, there you go. Yeah, Is that you saw? You all got one, you all got your fix. Right. You want one as well? There you go. No, no worries. Good luck. Good luck. Tell me about your builder. Number four, what is it? What's changed? What's how have we improved things? Well, how could we improve things? Well, this is a good yeah. question because yeah. everybody's very impressed by Fusion Three Plus. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. Well, like everything, there's always room for improvements. Yeah. Our big changes starting from the front of the machine would be the the pickup and the intake. Time goes on, tractors are getting bigger, crops are getting more and more. So we've altered quite a bit in the pickup there to improve the intake of the crop, to incre increase the volume of crop that will feed in. Thousand speed gearboxes now are becoming a big thing for bigger horsepower. With the 1000 speed gearbox, you see you've got more speed and less torque. So it's it's ideal for feeding a baler. You don't get the shock or the load on the machine you get with 540. Yes. Crops are getting heavier. We're going from 10 foot swarts into 30 foot swarts. Everything has to happen quicker and the machine has to improve to suit. Where we're improving is we're going to Isabus control now because that's been the switch over. Uh, a lot of customers requested where they plug the baler directly into the tractor terminal now and they can work from the tractor terminal yes. or you got an Isabus control for yourself. Um, is there any kind of saving then? You don't have to buy the box to control it? You have that option. You have that option. Okay. Isabus gives you a lot more options on the machine and features as well. You're not restricted because you can you know, you can put in all extra. Lots of things being added to these machines now, like weighing, uh, moisture reading. It's it's all, you know, part of the package for customers if they want that. The wrapping cycle itself is actually speeding up now. Okay. So we've got a faster wrapping cycle. Our transferring time is shorter. So the whole wrapping process. Has your sort of minimum oil flow requirement gone up a little bit? No, we're still working on the 50 litres. Yeah, okay. 50 litres. So all machines are load sensing, so which is brilliant. It only takes what it wants on supply. Yeah, yeah. You're not constant pumping. You know, hydraulics are staying cooler. Machine is operating smoother. A lot, lot better. So that side of it remains the same. I mean, you chose to launch it before here. Yeah. What does the plan mean to you guys? Look, at the Irish market is still a fantastic market for McHale, even though probably 90% of what we make now we export. This is our home market. Uh, it's where the Fusion was, was trialled tested from day one okay. you know no matter where you go in the world machines don't work as hard as they do here you, you have to listen to your customers that that is as big a part of the reason that we were here at the plowing is to listen to our customers yes you have to show your product yes you have to sell your product but we get the feedback here perfect timing the grass season is just finished the straw is just finished it's all fresh in the customers heads and then you put it into practice and that's what we've done for years and that's why the product is continuously improving all the time was well, this Model 1 or have we any on in the field yet? Uh, no, we've had them out on tests quite a bit this season, yeah. Have you, um, any, have you any sold as such? Or uh, in, in, in disguise. Yes. Yeah, so, so <laughs> in, in, in disguise is probably one way of putting it. So. I like that. Uh, no, look, at every, every product gets two years tests. It, that's a yes. company policy. Every product gets two years tests before it comes to the marketplace. It eliminates all the problems. It irons out all the issues. Um, lots of customers here with Fusion 1s, 2s and 3s that have done them extremely well. And we want to make sure when they go to four that they're more than happy with their purchase. So, yeah, cool. Thank you very much for your time. Good to see you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Up the plow 2022. Listen, I wouldn't make your granny. <laughs> I wouldn't make your. Oh, we're not Come finished. Come on, we're going again. We're going again. We're going again. We're going to catch you. Wouldn't make your granny. I want you to scare the next person going past. Up the plow in 2022. Three, Three two, one. Up the plow 2022. <laughs> <laughs> Alright boys, good luck, good luck. Frank, James, what's the crack with the show? Oh, we've had a very busy day today. It's our first show since uh, 2019 at the Plough and uh, we expected a large crowd and uh, they've, they've all turned up. A lot of our loyal customers have turned up to uh, talk to us as well about previous deals that they've had with us, yes. etc. Yeah. Well, I suppose this year we, we brought a lot of the trailer product this year because we uh, built a new factory last year and it was opened in November of last year, wasn't it, Frank? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I suppose ordinarily we wouldn't have as many trailers here, so okay. it's, the stand is probably a little more crammed than usual. Yes. A lot of product here, yeah. What's, what's the latest th thing to roll out of the factory? What's the, the newest toy we've created? Uh, on the construction trailer side, we've added uh, a new half pipe range in 16 tons, 18 tons and 20 tons. Also some uh, 19 ton twin axle low loaders. But we also have our range of mixer feeders, uh, shear grabs, shear buckets, slurry pumps, 
uh, and tankers and uh, ripple bar trailing shoes and that on the stand here also. 20 years ago a 16 tonne number was a big number. What, what's the go-to now? What's your, your average order size? How big do you want it? <laughs> <laughs> bigger better? Just as simple as that? You know, a 20 tonne uh, is, is the norm now and uh, up to 24 tonnes. Yes. Well, even back then it was all super singles. I mean, is everything going out in flotations now? Or? Mostly, yeah. Yeah, more, yeah, yeah. The craziness of this year and still, how do you manage that as a business? The more successful we are in sales and the further the order book gets ahead of us and that we have to uh, buy the material ahead. So it's involved a huge investment in the company in steel stocks and that there so that we can maintain the prices that we've sold the machines at and not have to go back to the customer to uh, go over the deal. And we are the one company in Ireland who has avoided doing that. Yeah. During the past three months we've seen a softening in steel and even today in, on the stand here we, the price we'll be quoting would be back a little bit from where it was but as maybe in the new year that could change the other direction again so now there's a bit better value to be had. The shows for us, we've put a big push into shows this year to support the dealer ne network that we have and we probably are and have been in the process of expanding the network particularly in the UK, probably going to put one or two more in Ireland as well. We meet people and we talk to people here today and that could be the customer in two years time could be the customer anywhere along the way. Missy has talked to us here, hasn't made any intention of buying anything, but he's had a look and it's part of his decision-making process later on. You get one too? Pretty oh hot. my Pretty God. Hot. Pretty yes. hot. What? Well, <laughs> you get one as well? I'll be there. Yeah. Yo. Okay, you need a change. Oh, I get two hats. Oh, He's not getting us our own bag now. <laughs> Abby. Oh, it's me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there, on the here. On the here. Give it Abby. Yes, perfect. We see us. We see jacket. I'm gonna get large. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> you see, just for me, never, ever give him a jacket, ever. No matter what he does for you, never give him John one. John doesn't even give me a jacket. I get the hot things, I get the hot things. Right. You stand in the middle, Shane. You stand in the middle, I get Kevin in as well. Come on, Kevin. There we go. There you go. Perfect. Thanks, lads. No shit. There you are. Thanks very much. No water. Yeah, sure. See you later, right? Yeah, so I'd like to welcome everyone to the National Ploughing Championships and to the Dairy Master and Stand. We're extremely busy here. As you can see, there's a great um, buzz and great environment around here at the moment. Um, I suppose the Ploughing Championship is very important for Dairy Master. I suppose it gives us the opportunity to demonstrate our innovative um, product range. So I suppose just to give people a feel for what Dairy Master is all about. Um, we're leaders in dairy farm technology and we have a quite a comprehensive product range from milking equipment to feeding equipment, manure scrapers, milk cooling tanks and health and fertility monitoring. What's the one that's like it's it's the hot product that you're you're really trying to get out there? Okay so our uh, Dairy View 360 is our new herd management software. It's the generation change from the software we've had before in terms of linking the, the milking equipment and the, the milk productivity data from the parlour with the health and fertility monitoring data and third party data like milk recording and so on and being able to link all that together all in one platform so the farmer can view that in the parlour and uh, can also view it remotely uh, be it mobile phone or a desktop. Well, I uh, take it then for that to work, that has to be an end-to-end -end Dairy Master hardware in the, in, the, in the system? At the moment, yes, that's based on the Dairy Master hardware, but that doesn't mean that in the future we can't uh, roll that out to, to other makes of parlours or other types of parlours. Initially on the parlour, but also then being able to milk in some, like the new monitor, health and fertility monitoring, uh, milk cooling, um, and potentially also scraper systems and so on as well. Being able to link that all, all onto one platform and see what's actually happening. Uh, milk price obviously is good at the moment, and that's translating into you know a lot of positivity in the marketplace. And the National Power Championships gives us an opportunity to showcase that and to engage with the customers. And you know, yes, we get the feedback on the engineering side. Uh, what farmers would like to see, what, what new products they, they'd like us to be working on, but also uh, in terms of you know the products that we have and what their investment plans. Well, you were saying there they're asking about lead times and partners or whatever. I mean, how have you as a, a business had to ride through the, the current 
wave of inflation and business challenges. Yeah, I mean, the uh, inputs are going up. Every farmer watching this will know that. But the same is happening for us in our business. All of our inputs costs are going up as well. But then, you know, there are other challenges we've had to face as well with you know lead times and especially on key critical components yeah, yeah. in the electronics industry and so on. And that has, uh, I suppose, impacted as well our ability to to get products out as quickly as has we the, would. Has the semiconductor issue affected you guys at all? It has, yes. You know, so you know, we use a lot of tech in, our, in technology in our, in our products, a lot of automation, and that's based on electronics and on semiconductors. So getting some of those chips can be challenging. Do you feel like you're over the hump now? Is, is, is the worst behind us? In terms of the supply issues, I, I think we are over the hump that the worst is behind us. In terms of the, the inflation, it, that's a geopolitical. Oh, yeah. Uh, so who knows? No, I can't give an answer. Yeah, on yeah I understand I wish that. I could. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I also now uh, want to present our Farm Software Award for the established company. Uh, this company, um, I won't say they're here as long as you are, anime, but uh, Herdwatch have been in the innovation arena for a long, long time. They've really developed a, a technology that was really for a forgotten sector in terms of our sheep industry. And I talked to them about the influencers across the US, Canada, and New Zealand that are actually crying out for a piece of technology like this. So. Guys, if you can make yourself uh, available here for a photo, I'd like to congratulate Mervyn and, and James from Herdwatch on their new system, Flockwatch, uh, for farm management and, and digital re records on farm. Fabian, Herdwatch, I'm just after chatting to you for a minute. Are you French or are you Irish? What's the accent? You've got an Irish accent, but are you? I'm, I'm actually both, but I was French born and raised. Okay. And uh, moved to Ireland in 1996. That's 26 years ago now. We were uh, in the award ceremony the other day and Herdwatch picked up an award. What, what was it and what was it for? And yesterday we, we won our first award for uh, a new app that we launched, I think in March, about six months ago, called Flockwatch, okay. which is essentially Herdwatch for sheep farmers. You know, Enterprise Ireland have been great supporters of Watch uh, for many, many years. Uh, so we, yeah, we're absolutely delighted. Simply, what is the product? Um, it's a piece of software that you have on your phone and it allows farmers to essentially manage their herd or their flock uh, anywhere, anytime. So this is full like uh, end to end, like a traceability on every animal yes, and, like, yes. and talking, you know, vaccinations all that yes. kind of As things happen on the farm, one is to do with compliance. So they have to record certain things to be compliant with the likes of department regulations, EU regulations, or BIA regulations. Uh, and that can be done in the Herdwatch app very, very simply. The important thing there is they can record it when it happens, not having to remember, remember it to and that. three days later, what did I do, which animal was this? Whether you have internet or not, it can work offline. The other thing that it does is allows farmers to send the department key information around, for example, calf registrations and movements, all things that are required by law, which farmers used to have to do on paper. Now they can do in Herdwatch in seconds. So it just essentially saves time. That's, I think the average that our farmers tell us they save on Herdwatch weekly is three hours. With the phones, the beauty of it is you could drive over with a tractor, break your phone, just get a new one, log in, and you've got all your information. You don't lose anything. So what's the subtle difference then with Flockwatch as to what the new thing is? Essentially, Flockwatch is Herdwatch for sheep farmers. It's the first version, so it doesn't have everything that Herdwatch does but it is way more advanced than the first version of Herdwatch was with Safer uh, Cattle. Yeah, obviously experience. Yeah, we've, we've come a long way. So it's, it is very much the same principles. You know, sheep farmers had sort of maybe not felt the love from the software side. They just didn't have a lot of options there. And we saw that and we decided to try and do something about it. So we've got guys in the team that are actually sheep farmers themselves. Yes. So that helps us understand, you know, what are the challenges? And it took us, what, a year and a half to get to that point. And we released it last March. And I believe at this point in time, we've a couple of thousand farmers at least trialing the, the system. So it's, it's actually gone really well. Go. My brother makes me watch Firebix every week. And you love it though? Oh, it's great. It's brilliant. <laughs> So we did a day filming with Dave McDonald and at the back of the Jeep I had to sit down in the camera and take a phone call because his dad was just like, why are we lad news you? He has to get talking to you. Clean mod, four flex mod. Here he is, <laughs> mod at the end of the phone. Christopher Keaton. Ha, 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 ha.
Tell you that about you, Skipper. Yeah, yeah, I need a 414. Yes. A new one. <laughs> Tell you what we need, Do you like that lens? We need two pokes. Two pokes? Yes, me. This is like Belfast thing. I never heard hella pokes. pokes in my life. Never? Pokes. What did you say? Oh, an ice cream. An ice cream? Oh, an ice cream. Yeah. I'll have an ice cream. Call, funny, I call Listen. a thing that's called ice cream. No. I call it ice cream. No, there's ice cream. Well, we get an ice cream. Brian. There's sliders. Brian. Listen. Well, we get an ice cream. Sir, I can't hold the poke and do the video at the same time. What do you want me to do? What do you need? I just want to hold this here. <laughs> the best pokes at the Plan Match 2022 are at Americano Ice Cream Limited. The best pokes, 99s. You that know nice it yourself, way. lad. Is that nice? <laughs> if you're looking for a poke, next day over, on up, do the best pokes here. Just just as a question, do you know what a poke is? Do you know what a poke is? There you go, Brian. What do you what do you call this? A 99. A poke? What is it? A poke, you call it a poke. A poke? Oh, he calls it a poke. Uh, You're the man. I'm only after saying to you, I feel like I've cheated Leslie. <laughs> because I got me and you a poke. We thought we'll go back to the innovation centre here at Enterprise Ireland and we'll either poke outside and then we'll go upstairs. But I Leslie's in the background there. And if you see him, he had a wee drink in his hand there. So he's sitting enjoying a nice drink, looking at the world going by. What a man. Bobby, what do you call that? What's that called? It's a funny cone. A, a poke? Co a poke? Yes. Never heard of a poke. What? I heard of a poke, but not. <laughs> <laughs> that is a poke, sir. That's that not his version of a poke, Brad. That's not his version of a poke. I know where I'm oh from, anyway. Oh there you know what your version is. My version, that's a poke. That's that's a poke. Hey, I'll try and get finished. Oh, that's definitely a go on. That's just, just a normal go on. A poke. A go on. If, if it has a flake, it's an 89, but it's a poke. It's still a poke. That's a poke. That's a new one. That's a poke. Mine have gone by now. Oh, well, listen. <laughs> I think Brian's fighting an uphill battle here. Right. So my first experience of the plough match is coming to an end. The rain's in. It's a sign, John. We can get up the road early. I just want to thank everybody who came up to us, had a chat with us, took a pass. Anyone who's subscribing right now currently to the platform, it was great to meet you. I hope to meet many more next year and maybe a wee award from Enterprise Ireland might go and miss. <laughs> for, for our awesome innovation in uh, Farmflex and everything we do. Enterprise Ireland have been great. They've been unbelievable. Having a base here, been able to come back, start the edit, you know, charge our batteries, do whatever, feed us, water us, you know, fair play Enterprise Ireland. Uh, guys, it's been a wet one here on day three, but it's all over Plan 22. Done and dusted. It's been great to meet my seven, eight, ten friends and uh, hear the awesome, awesome one-liners and witty boys that uh, are out there in the farming community. Let's Thank you guys, it's been a pleasure. Yeah.